Hey everybody and welcome back. So this is going to be kind of a short quick video because it's the uh, continuation of the MSL1 video series and this one is about the design. If you're new to my channel, let me press a button here. If you're new to my channel, I'm obsessed with giant scale model aircraft. I love everything model aviation. I love the drones, I love the quads, I love the FPVs, I love turbines, I love everything. But fiscally I can only afford one of those silos and my silo is giant scale planes which I design. I very rarely build a kit. I do buy some ARPs once in a while because they're just awesome, kick ass. But my passion is building giant scale airplanes. So let's get into this, okay? So, and let me make this a little bit bigger. Whoops, there we go. So um, this is the MSL-1. Um, it is retired, it's not crashed. I've had a couple people say it crashed. The wings are in storage and the fuselage, believe it or not, is in my attic right now. I'm going to redesign the undercarriage to have floats and fly it off water one day. So the airplane is still very much alive. Um, the airplane is still one of my most favorite airplanes. I have like 1,350 flights on it. And I uh, had a Hacker um, A100, uh, 6,000 watts on takeoff. I'm going to talk about that at the power part of this video series. But today we're going to talk about the design. And um, if you don't know, I've already done a video on the overview. This is the design video, doing one of the fuselage, wings, stabs, and then the power system. Before I get too far in, I want to talk about my awesome supporter, uh, rtlfasteners.com. I uh, just want to make a little bit of a distinction for a minute. None of my videos are sponsored. I've had a lot of people reach out and say, I want to sponsor your video. But I do have a sponsor that sponsors me in the hobby. And I try to share all the cool things they do. So I want to make that distinction here because I had a lot of people reach out and say, can I sponsor one of your videos? Nobody is sponsoring a video, but I do have a sponsor that sponsors my hobby. So if you go to rtlfasters.com, use top secret code DA30, you'll get 30% off in your orders over $50. Okay? So the design portion of this 150 cc 3w gas engine is what it was originally designed around i want it to be a vintage airplane like an eaa experimental aircraft association type 1919 ish airplane i'd gone to the uh, oshkosh in like 2003 or 4 saw all the vintage airplanes and said i've got to build a big rc one but i wanted to build it as if i was alive in 1919 and the eaa was around just kind of a fantasy airplane had to be an open uh, structure, um, had to have rigging that held it together, no fake rigging, real rigging that held the wings on, sewn on fabric like they did in the old days, cheap materials, simple clean design, needed to weigh under 100 pounds. I knew I was going to need the AMA, AMA waiver because I was going to be over 55 pounds, and it had to be over 80 inches, and at the time, IMAA said you had to be over 80 inches to be a part of that group, which was the International um, Miniature Aeronautical Association, I think. Uh, or Airplane Association, but they're defunct because they didn't know how to budget money. Timeline. Uh, design started in uh, late 2005. The first wood was cut in last, uh, late 2005. The airframe was 100% finished in July of 2006. Uh, then I let it sit for a couple of years because I was working on my B36 at the time. So in 2008, I got the fabric sewn on and doped, but it was super shrink cover right, and I'll talk about that when we talk about the wing. But I did need to dope it so if it was around moisture or if it rained on it accidentally, it didn't end up adding weight, which happened in a flight one time, and I almost crashed it. But I'll talk about that later on. Tess ran the engine in March 2008, and the plane shook so bad that I was afraid it was going to shake apart, so I stuck the whole airplane back in my attic, thinking I would never fly it. 2010, electrics got big enough. I uh, put my hacker on it, test flew it in April 2010, first flight, I, I test ran the electric in April 2010, got my AMA waiver, first flight was in April 2010, and I flew it up until 2017 with 1,350 flights. Design was originally 192 by 125, it ended up being 197 by 125. This was the first plane I designed in 3D first, then move it into CAD. Nowadays, I design in CAD, move it into 3D, but now because I'm so good with Fusion 360, if I design a new airframe, I'll probably start it in 3D. Um, back then, I used 3DS Max to design this airframe, exported it and flattened it as a DXF, got all these cool drawings that I could cut all the parts out for. Fuselage, um, all the sticks, I designed the fuselage to be very structurally rigid, but I also designed it so I could cut all of the wood parts um, out of two by fours or known wood I could get at a hardware store. So my entire intent of this design 
was to use only hardware bought wood. The ribs ended up coming out of a crate that I happened to take from, uh, we ordered a big hoist for a company I worked for and the hoist came in a really cool crate with this really thin plywood. It wasn't quite Luan, but it looked like it. So uh, all the ribs I cut by hand on my bandsaw from an old crate. All the other wood was from a hardware store, two by fours, uh, one by sixes, one by fours, um, and stuff like that. So this is what the basically the concept looked like that I ended up building the airplane around. The airplane went through a lot of different iterations that you'll see when I start getting into construction videos. Um, this was year two of flying it. I was up at Fort Wayne, Indiana at a fly-in and the plane at that time had like 125 flights. Uh, as far as the radio system, I wanted to keep it super simplistic, but I wanted to have extra batteries for the servos. So this is an old FM system before 2.4. <clears throat> On the left-hand drawing at the bottom, you see two receivers. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you see the little white boxes next to it. Those were uh, expander boxes that I could plug extra batteries into that would power my servos. So my RX batteries plug directly into the receivers, but those four extra batteries help power my servos. So I couldn't get brownouts. Well, you didn't get brownouts back then, but you couldn't end up running your batteries down. So that's kind of this video, everybody. I just want to give a quick overview. Um, I mean, an overview of the design. The overview of the video is first. This is the design video. Look, this isn't a hard design. I just want it to be super simple. I had an antic drawing of a fuselage that I did get some of the ideas for, but that's not an antic fuselage. Um, the wings just I made up in my head. The stabs I made up in my head. I've had some people say that the vertical sta stabilizer is way too big. Actually, mathematically, it's not. If you look at the, the, the aspect of my wing and the size of those huge barn door ailerons, that rudder is on the maximum you would ever go, but it's not exceeding it. Okay, so that's this video, everybody. Um, as you know, I like to end these videos. Um, oh, the next video is going to be on the fuselage construction. But as you know, I love at the end of these videos to talk about youth and aviation. Please get a kid involved in model aviation. If you're at the flying field and you got your airplane, some kids looking over the fence, invite them around and show them your airplane. Okay, if you're one of these old farts that actually, you know, had, um, I, I don't know, you knew, you knew Napoleon or you were best friends with George Washington and you're running the youth out, just go ruin somebody else's hobby. D don't ruin model aviation because there's so many young kids right now. Um, got a private message on Facebook, a young kid, went to a club he joined, he's 20 years old, showed him the radio and some old timer goes, you don't need a radio like that if you're a good pilot. Good pilots don't need radios like that. Look, old fart, you know, and here's the thing is, I'm an old man, okay? I'm 59, but I'm not an old fart. And that's my distinction on, on my YouTube channel. If you're an old fart, you just are a waste to our hobby. Okay? If you're telling a 20-year-old he doesn't need that radio, a good pilot doesn't need that radio, I'd love to see what you've flown and crashed in your life. Okay? So rock on, everybody. Thanks for watching my videos. And I'll see you next time. Be safe and take a kid flying. Please, take a kid flying. See ya.